Ah, there you are, my friends. I'm so glad you could make it back for our final chapter. It has been one week since the tragic turn of events that transformed Max from irrepressible scam to rampaging behemoth. Even now, he cuts a swath of destruction through the Upper West Side, releasing hideous spores that feed off the psychic energy of dream. You might think that this is yet another predictable story of a giant monster attacking Manhattan, but you'd be dead wrong, my friends. This is a mystery story, a tale of treachery and deceit. Watch carefully, my friends. Because before our story is complete, one of the characters you see before you will betray Sam and Max. Who is it? That remains to be revealed. I'll join you again at the halfway point to give you one final guess. But for now, you have more pressing concerns. The great Max Beast, his hour come round at last, slouches towards Brooklyn to be born. coming in from downtown. Oh no! The entire neighborhood of Tribeca has fallen asleep. Those fools! Why did they insist on running that independent film festival? The creature is destroying the city, and the longer we wait, the more powerful he becomes. As acting president, I'm forced to launch the final imperative. No, wait. There's still some of Max in there. I know it. There's got to be another way. We've tried everything, sir. Not quite everything. If you could somehow get a team of highly trained experts inside Max, they might be able to reach his brain and reverse the transformation. But the Mametrons have already attempted to get through every point of entry. Some of the attempts were too horrible to even think about. Yeah, but they've all been avoiding the mother of all orifices, Max's mouth. Enter through the mouth? That's suicide. Hmm. I guess it's possible. If you could find a way to get him to swallow you whole, there'd be an opening about three meters wide. Three meters? That would be impossible, even for a computer. Max used to eat Stinky's Megachomp rats in one gulp, and those aren't much smaller than three meters. Hmm, very well, sir. But I can only give you until 6 a.m. At that point, for the good of America, I'll have to launch the attack. I'm on the case. Now, where am I gonna find a team of highly trained experts? Ah, greetings, Sam. As the official representative of the Theater District, I offer our full support in this time of crisis. Hiya, Mr. Featherly. Want to join the team and help us save Max? Unfortunately, I must decline. Union rules, you know. Can't perform inside any theater smaller than 500 seats or any creature larger than 10 stories. And for obvious reasons, I am averse to being eaten. I am at your service, Sam. Hiya, Mr. Featherly. Want to join the team and help us save Max? Unfortunately, I must decline. Union rules, you know. Can't perform inside any theater smaller than 500 seats or any creature larger than 10 stories. And for obvious reasons, I am averse to being eaten. Friends may come and go or turn into horrible monsters, but a big gun will never let you down. It's my government-issued jar of chocolate-covered espresso beans. Everybody in the city got one to help us stay awake against Max's creepy spores. They were giving out cans of Head Rush brand energy drink, but it all got recalled on account of the high fructose corn syrup and tiny shards of broken glass. Who needs espresso beans? 
I'm riding the natural high of mayhem and mystery solving. I'd better keep these for when this case gets really boring later on. I don't need to shoot anybody. It's enough that they know I have a gun. Wandering around the Mole Man tunnels is no fun without Max. Let me see. The Upper West Side, Midtown, and the Village are all reporting extensive damage. And uh-oh, insiders say Greg and Fred are headed for a divorce. What about the children? Hello, and welcome to the Creature Obliteration and Punishment Society. Obliteration and Punishment? You've got it all wrong. We're trying to help Max. We will help him. To a generous serving of ass whooping. What are you guys doing here? We have pledged our prodigious processing power to devising an algorithm that will save the city, if not the entire universe. You are welcome. How long is that going to take? Estimating. Buffering. Time to completion 3.5 minutes. Well, that's convenient. Only three and a half minutes to come up with a solution to the whole thing? Oh, God, no. It will take three and a half minutes to come up with the estimate. So if a Gibbon had a microchip implanted... Hey, wait a second. What happened to the crime tron? She is on an extended weekend getaway with the Bluster Blaster machine. Ouch. How's uh, Kurt taking it? I only want her to be happy is all. Who needs that crime tron anyway, am I right? You shut your mouth. She was an angel designed in California and manufactured in heaven. Have you guys got any ideas about how I can help Max? Our breakthrough destructo match technology can calculate the perfect points to place nuclear warheads for maximum destruction with only PG-13 levels of blood and gore. That is one rabbit who will be multiplying. Into a thousand smoldering pieces. Come on, cops. It's not Max's fault he's been turned into a shambling Elder God. That is one Elder God who is headed for mandatory retirement. I'm serious, cops. Superball's gonna blow up my best buddy if I can't stop him. It looks like your BFF will soon be DOA. You guys are really getting on my nerves. And soon Max's nerves will be getting on you. After we blow him up, that is. If we could disguise the DeSoto, we could use it as a Trojan horse to sneak into Max's body like a virus and take out any mind worms or whatever it is that's causing this whole thing. 
Please don't mention Trojan horses, worms, or viruses around us. Will you join the rescue team, Mama Bosco? Sorry, Sam. If this is going to work, you're going to need me operating the radio and monitoring equipment from here. Paperweight and I will be happy to assist, of course. We will? Man up, Paperweight. Sam is going to need someone familiar with Creatures of the Dark Dimension. That's a good start, but you're going to need five more people. A scuba diver, a veterinarian, a psychologist, a dark wizard, and a brain surgeon. Did somebody call me? Sybil, you've come to help us save Max? What? Heck no. Seriously, did somebody call me? Harry Molman grabbed my cell phone from me and smashed it. But... but... Oh, all right. I'm in. I'll wait by the car. Looks like you've got your team, Sam. Now go out there and get Max to eat you! That sounded better in my head than out loud. Any luck yet, Sam? There's got to be some way to turn Max back to quote-unquote normal. Don't worry about that, Sam. Just concentrate on getting Max to eat you. With Sybil and Dr. Norrington's help, you boys will be back to stopping crimes and wasting my time before you know it. Yes, brain surgery on a creature as large as this has almost a 0.72% chance of success. I never thought it would be this hard to get Max to eat something. He's probably still full after eating the Bronx last night. He's bound to come looking on our street any second now. Just get out there and try to look tender and succulent. Those flaming Max head things don't seem to be getting into the lab. For the time being, anyway. I'm playing a recording on a super ultrasonic frequency that keeps them away. What recording is it? I can see you! Ah, I wondered why I was subconsciously being driven into a murderous rage. So, why were you warning us not to take a nap or read political blogs again? Because of the spores, you see. Creatures, such as the one your ex-partner turned into, churn them out like vegans from a liberal arts college. They are linked to the host, and they feed off the psychic energy of the city's nightmares! It's all very gross, but perfectly natural for an elder god. You should have seen me during my awkward phase. I was putting out so many spores as a miracle I didn't go blind. How does the lab still have power when most of the city is being destroyed? I converted everything over to biodiesel in case of emergency. There's a big vat of vegetable oil on the roof. Are we safe here in the lab, Mama Bosco? Max has been leaving this part of town alone, mostly. We're safe as long as we stay awake. You should avoid any long, repetitive, and unnecessary conversations. It's just like when I was first starting out as a sorcerer. There was another student at the boarding school, seemed to think everything was all about him, and then one day I was telling him I said, Paperweight. Yes, shutting up, my master. Why are you still working on that destabilizer, Mama Bosco? You got your body back. I'm still trying to find a way to get Dr. Norrington back to his own dimension. Yog Sagoth is my lord and master always, but I think we could use some time apart. So far, I've only been able to manage quick jumps of around 15 seconds or so. Sounds neat. I want to watch. See anything familiar? Just the usual screaming void past the brink of infinity. We'll have to try again later. The real tragedy of Max turning into a giant monster is that this attack is exactly the kind of thing he would love to watch. Very well. Keep me updated. Yes, sir. Awfully convenient that you're next in line for the presidency right as Max gets turned into a giant monster. Yes, sir. Convenient. And terrible. What was that you were talking about? The final imperative? A full nuclear strike against former President Max. 
Where would you get the equipment for that? Each of the Mametrons has been fitted with a nuclear warhead and given a programming upgrade so that their song references are slightly less dated. Also, they can fly now. A nuclear strike would wipe out all of New York, not to mention kill my formerly little buddy. Acceptable losses. It's all part of Contingency Plan 2, devised when Max became president. A acceptable? How can you say... Wait, Contingency Plan 2? Statistical analysis indicated that Max becoming a gargantuan hell beast was the second most likely outcome. What was the most likely outcome? Imagine a scenario involving the worst aspects of the Norse legend of Ragnarok, the Book of Revelations, and Weekend at Bernie's. How bad's the damage, Super Bowl? As damage goes, it's rather spectacular, sir. The ex-president is the most horrible and destructive creature ever to enter New York, not counting those coming from Long Island. We've had to quarantine the entire island of Manhattan. So you're saying it's just us, alone against some colorful street gangs and a sewer system full of bloodthirsty chuds, unless we can... escape from New York? Actually, the chuds have been deployed to secure the perimeter, sir. A little tolerance and appreciation would be nice. Half the city is destroyed, and Mama Bosco still can't find someone to help bust up this old shivero. Paintings like these just give scientists an unhealthy body image. Day to die. If you're a giant monster attacking the city, am I right, fellas? Now you all know I'm not one for speeches, but I have prepared a few words. <clears throat> Let's kick that devil bunny's ass! Move out! Get enough speed. I bet I could jump this thing straight into- Sorry, Sam. The modifications I've made to the DeSoto make it perfect for traveling through Max's innards. But it can't travel on land. Everything checks out here. Your eyes are getting very, very heavy. Oh, hi, Sam. With the modifications I've made to the DeSoto, we should be all set to travel through Max. You'll just need to find a way to get it inside him. Are you sure it's safe for you to go on this mission in your, um, condition? Don't worry, Sam. I've talked to the best OBGYNs and the finest classical sculptors, and they all agree that everything's fine. I'm not due for another two weeks, at least. Nice work, Sybil. I didn't know you were into cars. Oh, you know, after college, I got together with a few of my girlfriends, and I know it's a cliche, but we opened a chop shop. Suction wheels, antibody-proof paint job, and an exhaust system rich in omega-3. And what's that I smell? I thought you would appreciate that. Wiener scented air fresheners! Sybil, you're the best. Are those fake Maxes bothering you? Sleep! Sleep! Sam, I'm in my fifth trimester here. I couldn't sleep even if I wanted to. So, uh, looks like you and Lincoln had an, uh, uh, eventful honeymoon. Oh, it was absolutely magical. He took me back home to D.C. to introduce me to his friends. And then one night, as we were out on the White House lawn, looking at the stars, he just suddenly took me in his... Sam? Sam, are you okay? What? Oh, sorry, my brain went into shock for a second to prevent permanent damage. 
Please, go on. Not much more to tell, really. Thirteen months later, and here we are. Well, I'm glad you two had a nice honeymoon, even though you must never ever speak of it again in my presence. Oh, that's sweet. You know, I wanted to thank you and Max for introducing me to Abe, and I know how much you both like new guns, so before I left, I got you both a surprise. Oh, gimme! Where is it? Shut up, not Max. But seriously, Sybil, where is it? It's in those boxes of stuff I gave you for safekeeping. Oh. Okay, see you around, Sybil. Let me know as soon as you're ready to leave. I'd better keep these for when this case gets really boring later on. Hiya, pal. What's the rumpus? Hey, Flint. Want to join us inside Max's body for- Don't I, Sam. I've got to beat Cheeks while the beating's good. Um, okay... Don't fret, Grandpa. I'll put the pinch on those grifters trying to take you for a ride faster than you can shave a hobo's coin slot. Does he really have to do that with the lingo getting all disturbing? And it's always about hobos for some reason. <laughs> Looks like Max has been through here. He must have broken a water main while he was at it. Boy, I sure do feel tasty today. What with bathing in melted bacon fat all night. <laughs> Nothing. Go on. Shoo! Can you not do something about your wee friend here? I think if you just apologize for calling him short, we could put all this behind us. It's nae worth it. Were you making your diabolically delicious demon dogs? Aye. I really thought they'd bring the city together, too. That actually sounds kind of generous, Grandpa Stinky. I know, especially since everyone in New York would be hooked, and then they'd have to come to my diner to get any more. I'd make a fortune. And now I suppose you expect me to be giving you my super secret recipe. Well, yeah, that'd help. All right, there you go. Uh, that's it? Of course that's it. It's just a recipe. Why do you always have to make things so complicated? Do you want to join us for an action-packed fantastic voyage inside the body of Max? Do I? Do I? No! Oh, come on, Grandpa. Every action rescue team needs an unlikable one who's first to get picked off when the killing starts. Well, I can't. I'm washing my beard tonight. Have you and Stinky patched things up since your birthday party? She and that... that bridge and tunnel and sewer boyfriend of hers are up to something. I guarantee it, and they are not going to catch me by surprise. I think you're being too hard on Sal. I'll bet if you just talked, you'd find out you had a lot in common. Like what? Well, you're both almost impossible to kill, you like dark places, and you hiss a lot. <laughs> ah! What's with the delivery truck? Obviously, I'm delivering food for the war effort. I don't see anything in there but a bunch of cornmeal. That's because these flaming parasites ran off with all me wieners. We must feed the host. Pig lips and sphincters make us stronger. We regret nothing! With your trunk out of commission, now what are you going to do? Heading back to my diner while I still have one. But you'll be crushed, or lulled into a horrible nightmarish sleep by the hideous spores. Come play with us, Grandpa. We will whisper sweet stories from the congressional record. I haven't slept in three years, and I ain't about to start now. At least move your truck. You're parked in a red zone. <laughs> if you want it moved, then you'll have to do it yourself. Thanks for the recipe, Grandpa Stinky. Yeah, good luck with that, Marmaduke. Now I've got to perfect the recipe of my own. All you want, Sam. Give in to your rage. It makes me stronger. Oh, sometimes they're so much like the real Max, it's eerie. 
It's a ton or so of Grandpa Stinky's world-famous ultra-high fructose cornmeal. I don't think I'd be able to carry all of it. The last box of corn dogs in the entire city. Corn dogs? Gimme, give gimme! Give what? Dog me, Sam. Keep them coming. Go on, beat it. Those imposters like corn dogs as much as the real Max does. I hope that means the real Max is still somewhere inside that lumbering sack of doom. Hey, Sal! Guess he's still skittish about that whole necking with girl Stinky, plotting the murder of Grandpa Stinky, and unknowingly contributing to the apocalyptic fever dreams of a mad ventriloquist dummy from the Dark Dimension thing. But what's he doing hanging around Bosco Tech? Something smells good. <laughs> Come on, Max. Here, boy. How do you guys keep that flame going so long, anyway? We are fueled by the inextinguishable flame of human imagination! And kerosene. I don't see any kerosene. Where's the supply line? That's none of your damn- Uh-uh. Nobody steals my little buddy's catchphrase. Invincible. Okay, that settles it. From now on, I'm only taking cases against bad guys vulnerable to gunfire. We're going to need to make that digestion proof. Mmm, corn dogs. They're good and good for you. Hey, Sal! He's probably still smarting from falling down that bottomless pit. I'll come back and talk to him later. Manhattan, a city under siege. But is it, as some would have you believe, the fault of an out-of-control hell beast or something far, far worse. Hey, Max, how's the weather up there? <laughs> you crack me up, little buddy. Hey, watch it! Your blocking's alive! Oops, sorry, Jurgen. What's new, Beelzebub? No time to chat, Sam. I'm doing public relations work that is absolutely crucial to my enterprise. didn't even know Hell had a public relations department. We sincerely appreciate your feedback. Now go away! Hey Satan, want to join our rescue team for fun-filled escapades inside Max's innards? Now what could I possibly have to gain from that? Well, it'd be a lot of fun, and you could just pop us all right inside with your magic powers and stuff. Besides, it's just a good, noble thing to do. You're not familiar with my previous work, are you? Any ideas how we could get Max to eat us? You keep asking me to help you, Sam. I don't believe you understand. I'm kind of a bad guy. Mind if I uh, scooch on through and get to that water tower? I cannot deal with more of these delays! Please, Sam. The lighting is perfect right now. 
be a good boy and wait until we're finished here. It's really important that I get over to that. Did you know there's a special circle in hell dedicated to people who interrupt me while I'm working? Point taken. What are you filming here exactly? It's just a documentary explaining how I had nothing to do with this giant max attack. Ah, plausible deniability. More like protecting my brand. Just look at that psychic lummox. It just sits there eating things. Where's the temptation? Where's the cruel, ironic twist? I want to go on record saying Sorry Max blew up your toy box. And that's another thing. Devil's toy box? I've never seen the thing before in my life. It's slander, pure and simple. Yeah, the story I heard was it got left behind by some elder gods or something. Exactly. Elder gods. They were already gone by the time I got here. Pinning this on me is nothing but character assassination. Hello, Jorgen. Satan's got you as his cameraman now? Sam, please. I'm a German vampire. Filmmaking is in my blood, as is the blood of several German filmmakers. <laughs> so, Jorgen, need an assistant director or something? You wouldn't be able to handle it, Sam. Just between you and me, the talent is insufferable. Oh, he keeps telling me, make sure you get my good side. He's Satan. He doesn't have a good side. Interesting wardrobe you've got going on there, Jurgen. <laughs> Figures you would not understand. The goth look is so three years ago. 1900 retro is the look for fall in New York City. Plus, it's a lot cheaper. Sam, what happened to you to make you so cynical? From the Great Pesto Flood of 1908 to the premiere of Starlight Express in 1987, New York City is no stranger to tragedy. But this tragedy... Go match New York rules! I will cast you into the pit if you walk into frame again! Note the lack of tail on the creature and the tentacles, which are far too busy to be my work. Shout out to all the Crime Stoppers in the 212. Clear the scene now, if you value your soul. Sam and Max fans are the best in the world. Over here, you can see the so-called Sam Dear Boy. You'll be damned if I let you continue to interrupt me. So, that bald spot of yours keeps showing up on camera. Can you guys fix that in post? What? Is it showing? My style is explicitly guaranteed it wouldn't be visible. 100% pure rapeseed oil. Mama Bosco converted the entire lab to biodiesel. I can't get close to it with that film crew in the way. Satan keeps waving that microphone around like he's some kind of big shot. Soundcheck! Check, check. Succubus, succubus. Is this thing on? <laughs> Yipe! You okay, Satan? That was quite a fall. I've had worse, but I can tell when I'm not wanted. Come on, Jürgen. Oh, thank wickedness. That nightmare is finally over. Let's go back to hell. Oh, right.
this is one of Grandpa Stinky's most prized recipes. I can't toss it around anywhere. Getting Giant Max to eat you is good. I am at your service, Sam. It was sure nice of you to pitch in to help save Max, Mr. Featherly. Of course. Anything for this great city, Sam. I would sacrifice my soul itself to guarantee the spirit of theater lives on, and the lights of Broadway are never truly snuffed out. I thought Max destroyed Broadway the first night of his rampage. Indeed. And my theater is now buried beneath two tons of his spore. So I have some free time on my hands. You wouldn't know where I could get an egg, Mr. Featherly. Oh, I see how this works. Everyone assumes that just because I happen to be poultry, of course I know where to score them some eggs. It's for a good cause. <sighs> Very well. Bear in mind that this is strictly a one-time deal. Noted. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Me, 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 me. Unique New York, unique New York, unique New York. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's the problem? I can't do this with everyone watching me. I don't think they're watching you, Mr. Featherly. There's a giant monster attacking the city. It's good of you to say so, Sam, but my magnetism and stage presence are undeniable. I simply cannot do this until everyone turns around and gives me some privacy. I simply can't help you until you get everyone to turn around and stop watching me. How are we doing on that egg, Mr. Featherly? Uh, can I get you a magazine or something? Uh, it's called Koi Cloaca, Sam. It's a perfectly legitimate medical condition. I simply can't help you until you get everyone to turn around and stop watching me. Please press or say the number of the question you want to ask. Look, you guys, it's Ada Lovelace. We're sorry. We're unable to turn around or move for any reason. Curse my lack of swivel attachments. I hope you guys are being careful. I hear there's a particularly nasty virus going around. I swear I have been careful. It was only that one time. Can never be too careful, guys. Better run a scan or something. We're sorry. This will require us to go through a full reboot. We would be unavailable for approximately 30 to 60 seconds. We'll find some way to manage without you. Shut down commencing. Will I dream? Just hurry it up. Any luck yet, Sam? Uh, would you guys mind giving Mr. Featherly a little privacy? Is he going to do something fascinating and disgusting? We have got to see this. For, uh, science. Hey, look behind you. It's the ghost of J. Edgar Hoover. Not now, Sam. You're blocking our view of that abomination of nature. A rooster laying an egg. Besides, J. Edgar Hoover's ghost is a real drag. I want to see you use that dimensional destabilizer again. In due time, my boy. Traveling there hasn't done us any good so far. Perhaps if we were to hold on to something. Ah, very well. Let's try it again. Very well. Keep me updated. Yes, sir. Ooh, is that a rooster laying an egg? What? Where? Oh! Ah-ha-ha! Oh, finally! It's going to take forever to get my figure back. Thanks, Superball. I desperately wanted to see that, sir. Ask him if he'll lay another one. Maybe some other time. It sure was nice and disturbing of Mr. Featherly to donate his egg to the war effort. Nah, no, these are too delicious to waste. No, Featherly worked too hard on this egg for me to go tossing it around anywhere.
one recipe to rule them all, and one egg for binding. Nerd! Now, how am I going to find a way to heat this up? The potion is completed, my brothers! We must feed the host! Bless it, corn dogs! Last one in's a stinking parasite! It's beautiful! It's a good thing we spent extra to make the DeSoto a watertight convertible. Okay, everybody, put your shoes on. It's time to leave. Disgusting! Hey, Poet, don't let any of it get in my mouth. Uh-oh. Hey, Mametrons, I found a suspicious-looking corn dog just lying here. It's like lying in a puddle of carnival vomit. T-17 to base. Commencing bomb disposal. Gotta get that boom, boom, boom. All right, let's do this. Well, here we are in Max's stomach. Ruminate! Ruminate! Trespassers will be digested! Ah, oh, cram it, flame brain. GI to brain, GI to brain, trespassers in the stomach. They look quite delicious. Fascinating. The psychic feedback from the dark dimension has planted an image in our minds, causing us to perceive the creature's organs as if they were an actual kitchen. Oh, well, this is pretty much what Max's insides have always looked like. We've got to get up to the brain so we can get out of here, Sam. If we're gonna save Max, we can't waste any time. Plus, I really have to go to the bathroom. How are we gonna get out of here and up to the brain? He's still trying to digest the DeSoto dog, and that's just empty calories. We need to find a way to get a rush of blood or endorphins or something up to his gray matter. Digestive enzymes, stomach acids, meat and flesh tenderizers? I never figured Max was such a gourmet. Looks like this vent goes directly to Max's nose, so he can smell food while he's digesting it. Biology is disgustingly fascinating. Now craving. More corn dogs! One is too many! One hundred is never enough! This must be where Max stores all the nutritious food that enters his gaping maw before he digests it. I wonder if I should open it. He's still got a bottle of milk he drank in 1976. That answers that question. We made pretty good time getting to the stomach, considering all the traffic we ran into down the esophagus. Dr. Norrington, what can we expect to see in here now that Max has become a horrible, twisted abomination escaped from the mouth of madness? No offense. 
None taken. Internally, your compatriot should look the same as he always has, just more tentacly. We say the truly bizarre stuff for the outside of our bodies, because it's scarier that way. Any ideas? No, but please hurry! This is making me very nervous! My heart is pounding, all my blood is rushing to my brain! Walk it off, princess. You must know your way around here. How do we get up to the brain? You don't! You stay with us here and drift off into the peaceful sleep of digestion. Well, you're worthless. Just out of curiosity, how many calories would you say are in you? If I remember my high school biology, this tube leads up to the brain. Why isn't it moving? He just ate us, so he must be going into a food coma. That's not good. Even when he's not a colossal monster, Max's food comas can last for weeks. This must be how Max digests stuff. Like the tender morsels of wayward travelers. Ugh. I'm an elder god, and even I found that creepy. Hope this works. There's enough caffeine in here to make even a film blogger get up and move. What was that? Uh-oh. Hang on, everybody! Ladies and horrible monsters first. Not you, not Max. But I'm a horrible monster! Last stop, the cerebral cortex. I suppose that Max's brain always looks like a living room, yes? Well, Max is host to all kinds of weird parasites, and he likes to be a good host. Aha! Well, there's your problem. Greed galloping Golgi and lipstick on a Vespa with a leather-bound day planner. It's mind worms, right? I bet Featherly 50 bucks it was mind worms. It's a tumor. Damn it! <laughs> seems to be teeming with dark energy as well. Still, once we've removed it, your friend should pop right down to normal again. They're assuming that's what you really want. Why is it glowing? Sam, come here and take a closer look. Does that tumor look normal to you, Dr. Norrington? It's like nothing I've seen before. Perhaps you can identify why it's pulsing? You'll be able to get rid of that tumor with no problem, right, Sybil? I don't know, Sam. It looks weird. Check it out. It's Max's collection of ideas for novels, an audiobook on vinyl form. Glad to see he's keeping track of them. He's always coming up with these things, but I assume they just flew out of his tiny, oversaturated brain. The Happenstance at Ghastly Manor. It's a loosely autobiographical story of psychic horror. That's Max's gripping historical fiction thriller, The Eli Whitney Dilemma. Also, coincidentally, the name of Max's experimental fusion jazz band. A Killing Comes to Murdersburg, a Flint paper mystery. Oh, this is the hard-boiled noir fan fiction Max was telling me about. It's Max's heartfelt Inuit coming-of-age story. Are you there, Great Bear Spirit? It's me, Knutchluck. This must be for Max's inner monologue. Still analog, for the warm, rich sounds you can't get from digital. I guess it would help if I actually put a record on this thing. I'm pretty sure these tentacles aren't normal for Max. The dark matter is slowly transforming Max's entire body. If we don't act quickly, he'll be in this form permanently. This low-tech optic nerve will give me a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to literally see the world through Max's eyes. This must be Max's auditory nerve. Nothing but static. I guess there's nothing around Max right now worth hearing. Cozy. Feel the warmth, Sam. Does it make you drowsy? No, not really. 
how about now? Still no. Looks comfortable. Indeed it is, Sam. A brief respite from your adventures would be most reinvigorating, and you'd find yourself all the more amenable to investigative duties for it. I'm on to you, Fake Max. You and your cheap thesaurus are trying to bore me to sleep. Nothing doing. What part of Max's body do you spore guys come from, anyway? We are spawned in the screaming well of flames, nestled deep within the chest of the colossal beast, each beat of its heart sending a torrent of blood to combine with brilliant arcs of psychic energy, each beat of its heart forming a copy of the horrifying visage you see before you now. I'm skeptical. Okay, okay, it's the butt. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Sam, there are so many nightmares, each with its own unique flavor. Ask me that question and I can give you an infinite number of answers. Really? Infinite? At least five! What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Like licking the beads of sweat from the brow of a fevered harpsichordist in a Led Zeppelin cover band. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Have you ever dreamt of being eaten by a chicken? Like that. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Carbonated bile with a hint of cilantro, served at room temperature and garnished with the toenails of a junior senator. That's unsettlingly specific. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Lukewarm pork, suddenly finding itself served in a high school cafeteria and realizing it hasn't studied in years. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? A grapefruit peeled by a young maiden still feeling the warmth of her first kiss on her lips, then wrapped in magazine perfume samples and left on a bench at the Port Authority for 16 days. What do nightmares taste like, anyway? Pepsi. Looks comfortable. Sam, don't leave! You have to help us with this tumor! Sam, we've got to take care of this tumor. You can go exploring later. I bet if I touch it here, he'll start speaking with an Australian accent. Yo, it shocked me! The brain synapses are firing at an alarming rate. The voltage is quite high. Ugh. Whoa, Doc, get away, fake Max. Do you find my warmth alarming, Sam? The freaky creature is correct, Sam. We won't be able to operate until you can cut off the power to the brain. The medulla oblongata acts as kind of a circuit breaker for the brain. If you can cut it off, we can get to work. Okay then, experts. Where do I find the medulla oblongata? Perhaps behind this door? This record is just a figment of Max's imagination. It'll only work one place. Hey, I didn't expect that to work. It didn't. Ah! Where did they... Did everybody get all staticky and find themselves in the stomach again? I detected a spike in psychic energy coming from the monster. Is everyone okay? We appear to be in some sort of game room. You are now at the mercy of the brain, Butterball! Max must be using his psychic powers to keep us from entering the brain. Yes, they're very fussy at this age. He's just looking for attention. Better to ignore him. Okay, that's dumb. But I've got a better idea. If we could put enough electrical current through Max's body, it temporarily short out his powers and let us inside the brain. But that would take a voltage of at least 46 helijoules. The only place in the city with that much power is the electric plant down in Battery Park. Then we've got to find some way to get control of Max's body and take him downtown. Senseless vandalism has its place, but this isn't it. How are things going down here, Imposter Max? The host needs more corn dogs! 
tender, yielding pork lovingly wrapped in golden cornmeal. So sweet and so sinful. I think you've had enough, buddy. Ouch! We're not going to be able to take out this tumor until I get into the brain and throw that circuit breaker. I bet it works this time. Ah, nuts! There's no way I'm getting inside that brain until we can get control of Max's body. the best campaign ever ah there you are Sam paperweight here believes he's found a way to control the creature's arms yes we are standing on a network of neurotransmitters and by forming biogenic connections between them we can relay electrical impulses from dendrites in the brain to muscle the tissue short version poindexter I can step on these shapes to control the arms Great. Let's get to it so we can pick up huge stuff. You'll have to activate the manual override first. The impulses come through that machine over there. A darn board? Just in appearance, Sam. It's actually the center of the creature's hand-eye coordination. Well, that explains it. Max's depth perception has been off ever since he lost an eye in that whole laser tag misunderstanding. Max's kidneys kept trying to get rid of that sign, but finally let him keep it as long as it wasn't in the living room. The TV reception's much better down in the intestines because Max spent so much time laying cable. It's a bunch of whimsically outdated board games. Pan Galactic Despotic Dominion, the extended edition. Epic game of interstellar conquest with 7,000 highly detailed paintable miniatures. A single game can last your adolescence. What are the rules? Oh, it's simple. First, you assign a color to every player. Then you shuffle the draw deck and the discard deck, dealing eight cards counterclockwise, starting with the player who most recently had his wisdom teeth removed. Then you choose a technical proficiency. Sounds like ten barrels of fun. Sam, stay awake! Don't be fooled by his fiendishly boring schemes. It's a bunch of whimsically outdated board games. La Bonne des Maîtres. That's the most popular European design game for the past seven years running. It's got instructions in 12 different languages, all at once! It's a bunch of whimsically outdated board games. Ferret Frustration Time, a wacky game for all ages. Oh, that's just a dumb kid's game. It only takes three hours to set up. Hmm, billiards. That's it? You're looking at a pool table inside Max's body and you're not going to make any of the obvious jokes? Sorry, I already used up my quota for the year on our first case. Maybe I should get on the board, and you guys read off the instructions. Well, I do have something of a bad back. Nonsense. Paperweight's going to need all of my tentacles and various other appendages to have any hope of finishing this game. Blue pistols, brass knuckles, black bombs, green bullets, orange flails, and pink bacon slices. All part of a nutritious breakfast! Are you going to be helpful or just keep trying to make us go to sleep? I can be helpful! Right after I tell you about my latest campaign. It's called Assault on Crypt Death Grasp, and it takes place in the expanded Twisted Plains universe. One of my buddies from down in the pancreas was playing as an 18th level rogue, and he'd chosen a starting point. Snap out of it, Sam! You must stay awake!
<laughs> Saving throw against projectiles. Max has got some nerve. Ooh, I want to play. Wait your turn, fake Max. It's time to watch a master at work. Huh. This is pretty much the worst video game I've ever played. You have to read the command off the screen, Sam. I cannot see it from here. Left leg brass knuckles. Let me know if you need extra appendages, Paperweight. I have tentacles to spare. I guess the brain has stopped trying to work against us. I was concerned since we're so close to the speech center. This is going to be easy. Right hand brass knuckles. Wait a second. I didn't say that. Got it! Are you sure that was right? Perhaps you should try again. This is going really well. Keep listening to what I say. Left hand bottom. If you say so. Ah. Now we're getting somewhere. No, it's my turn now. We will need to complete two more circuits to activate the manual override. Left foot bacon. Got it! This is just like the final boss battle against Agamemnon in Ultra Shining Quest 2, where you have to use your holy katana three times against his exposed other sack to complete the ritual of quickening and- Don't listen to him, Sam. Stay awake and stay the course. Right foot bullet. Almost there! Smashing job, Sam! Right hand brass knuckles. Roger that! What have you done, Sam? The arms! They are spasming out of control! I've been hit. This wasn't supposed to happen. Error. I'm so caught up in you. Error. Oh no! The radioactive brain core is exposed! Your head will collapse, and there's nothing in it. And you'll ask yourself, who let the dogs out? Yes! A dentist chasing you with a hatchet, being loaded into the car for a trip to the vet! Oh, delicious! Sam, you must wake up! What? What happened? I must protest! I was savoring a most delectable nightmare! The radiation is too dangerous for you, Sam! You pass it out! Evidently, Paperweight and I are immune. Looks like you're stuck with me for another hundred years, eh, Paperweight? <laughs> Yes, my master. We'll go back and resume our studies, but you must find someone else to operate those arm controls. Who do I know who's immune to radiation? Sam! The radiation! You've got to get out before! Oh, never mind. I've got to stop doing that. We're going to need somebody immune to radiation to operate those controls. But who? Must be a cellular phone. It looks like some kind of exercise room. Sam, I think I found the uh, manual override for the leg controls here. I had to rewire some of the nerve endings, but now all I have to do is walk on this treadmill and we can make Max walk wherever we want. Great work, Sybil. That's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Hmm? What was that? I didn't say that out loud. Consecrated Kreskin on a communion wafer. She's reading my mind. I'm not reading your mind, Sam. 
The brain must be broadcasting your thoughts or something. Just ignore it so we can get to work. Come tell me when you're ready to start moving. I knew Max's immune system was tough, but I never knew it was mixed martial arts tough. Got any bright ideas, fake Max? No time for talk, dog man! It's time to move, move, move! Gotta feel that burn so you can get a good night's sleep! That's just a bullet, man! Shake it off! Shake it off! There you go! Come on, hit me again! Do it! Max has really got to cut down on the carbs. I always suspected Max was using performance enhancers. Fuel for the disgusting machine that is Max's body. It's just hormones. Oh, maybe it is just hormones. I just wish there was somebody who understood what I'm going through. Free weights? They're only free while supplies last. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Sleep. The sparring dummy inside Max is in a lot better shape than the one on the outside. He has already ripped out the intestines, though. That's awful cute. Medicine balls. Come on, Sam. You're inside Max's body. They're medicine balls. Think. Think. Nope, I got nothing. I could put in a few hours on this thing, no problem. Starting next month, at the latest. I'm just too busy with work right now. Don't worry about it, Sam. I've got it all under control. Just give me the signal and we're good to go. So, Fomax, what are you doing here? Not much, brah. You know, just getting a few hours of reps in before I get out into the city. Working the glutes is most important, even when you don't have any. Wow, Max is looking pretty buff. Would it be too weird if I asked him to turn around? Uh, yeah, man, so I can tell I'm boring you, so I'll just, uh, I'll just let you get to sleep. Hiya, Sybil. God, she's huge. What was that? Oh, I didn't say anything. What is she carrying, a baby or a yak calf? Excuse me? Are you calling me fat? Fat doesn't cover it. Come to think of it, a circus tent wouldn't cover it. I'll have you know that I am carrying the miracle of life, the promise of a new generation, and the affirmation of hope. What's your excuse? I think what you're doing is a really wonderful, beautiful thing, Sybil. As long as I don't have to see your mutant human statue offspring. It's very noble of you to bring a new life into the world and usher it to greatness. Or at least usher it into a dark basement or a carnival freak show to live out its freakish existence unseen by normal people. I'm not helping, am I? Nope. I've changed, Sybil. I totally get the whole parenthood thing now. You do? Tax deductions. Nice. I don't think you understand at all. Why don't you hop on that treadmill? Oh. So you're not even trying to be subtle with the fat comments anymore. Come on, Sybil. It's going to take all of us working together to save Max. And by the looks of it, you could be doing the work of five or six of us at least. Ugh! You just don't understand what I'm going through, bringing new life into the world. Well, getting her to help is turning out to be at least as painful as giving birth. Come on, Sybil, use the treadmill, for Max's sake. For Max's sake, how convenient. It has nothing to do with my losing weight. Well, a few dozen pounds couldn't hurt. Ugh, men. You just don't understand what I'm going through. After all the great work you've done rewiring the treadmill, you should be the one to operate it. Well... I hope she doesn't break it. Never mind. It's not my fault, Sybil. The brain is broadcasting my thoughts. Maybe it's better this way, now that I know what you really think. No, no, it's twisting my thoughts. I think you're just as lovely as the day I met you. Don't think that. Don't think that. <laughs> Can't you see what's happening, Sybil? The brain is trying to turn us against each other.
Maybe you're right, Sam. We should work together. But not too close together, because her gravitational pull can flatten me like a pancake. Hmm. Uh, see you around, Sybil. Maybe I can find something to make her less hysterical. Ugh! Can you believe this guy? I find the entire situation to be very contrived and misogynistic. Maybe Sybil's calmed down. Holy Mount Rushmore! Did she actually get bigger? Nice. This is pointless. I'd better stop talking until I can make her think I really care about this whole parenthood thing. Really sincere, Sam. I'm finally seeing it in person. This must be where Max keeps his junk. Nah, that's a couple of stories down. There's got to be something in here to take my mind off Sybil's condition. Ever since he became president, Max has had to carry his birth certificate and all his dental records with him at all times. To prove he was born in America? To prove that he was actually born. It's the Freelance Police Handbook for Racial and Cultural Sensitivity. The commissioner gave it to us because he said we keep reducing people to obvious stereotypes. Yeah, you know how those British Columbians are. Yeah, but the commissioner's one of the good ones. It's Max's gigantic, money-filled sock. <laughs> I thought he was lying about that. You're just too cynical. That's the kind of change I can believe in. I'm always going around leaving junk scattered throughout the time stream, and Max is there to pick up after me. We make a good team. Max got me that set of mariachi frogs for my birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's a real exciting story. What are you waiting for, you Pulitzer? Max has been withholding evidence from another case. That'd cause all kinds of messy legal entanglements. If we hadn't already blown all those Mafia guys up. Our old souvenir from the Mafia Free Casino. I got to keep the tail end in my inventory. Hey, I remember those cases with the thing and... That other thing with the stuff? Yeah, don't sweat it, Sam. We don't remember any of that stuff either. I've never actually seen Max buy a gun. I think his body just naturally secretes them when needed. Is that our old roach farm? No way. I'd forgotten all about that. And it looks like it is. One of the eggs is about to hatch. It's beautiful. Huh? Papa? <laughs> now I am, little champion. Now I am. Every time I think of that precious new life, I... Go on, play your game without me. <laughs> I need a moment. That old game is from when we were going through our self-conscious, edgy, politically incorrect phase. Yeah, when did that stop, anyway? I'll let you know as soon as it does. Ah, oh, I remember that old bucket of fish. Ah, things were so much simpler back then. Well, it was a different kind of complexity. And a lot longer, too. Plus, the voices were- Okay, Fake Max, we get it. Is it heartwarming or creepy that Max keeps a shrine to his dead great-grandfather inside his own body? I knew it! Max has been trying to poison me. Luckily, I've been eating enough fudgy freezes to build up a chocolate immunity. Baby shower balloons. Once I show these to Sybil, she'll definitely be... Max's brain is really starting to chap my hide.
Oh, come on, Max's brain. I was just gonna look at him. I better not get too close until I can remember if cacti are flammable or not. Hey, it's a big nest of spare audio video cables. These are just what I need for... Well, that's about the worst thing that could have happened. Any cockroach foster son of mine is plenty resilient enough to survive a good vacuuming. It seems like only yesterday I watched him hatch. Which is odd, considering it was only a few hours ago. Don't worry, Sam Jr. Your foster pa will take care of the Max Apocalypse with no problem. Who's worried? I'm a roach! I could survive a nuclear winter! I raised this roach from a grub. I'm not ready to lose him so soon. I raised this roach from a grub. I'm not ready to lose him so soon. What is that, a roach? Ugh, gross. Well, I never. Don't give it to me, Sam. Take it outside and kill it. Don't listen to her, Sam Jr. The mean lady is on heavy medication and doesn't know what she's talking about. Wait a second. You really do care about that roach, don't you? He's the promise of a future generation. Not that you'd ever understand. Think I underestimated you, Sam. You really do have the heart of a parent. And a real parent, not keeper of some half-statue freak show. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Let's get moving and save Max! Hallelujah, Sam Jr. Now that we've motivated our fellow life bringer, we can control Max's legs and haul his terrifying bulk across the length and or breadth of the city. How's it going, Sybil? I'm good. Just hurry and short out that brain. Sam, I'm picking up an unusual spike in brainwave activity from Max. Are you trying to take control of him? No, I've still got some more exploring to do. Sam, it looks like you're writing a letter. Would you like help? What? I mean, it looks like you're trying to control Max. Is that right? We've got everything under control, Mama Bosco. Rescue team, assume giant max form go. Motor skills to full power. Neurons and stuff aligned for transbasal plasmic shift or something. Release exhaust. Activate feet and legs. Manual override active. Go! Activate hands and arms. Uh, Sam, you have not unlocked the arms yet. All right. We can still walk around and stuff, though, right? We suppose, if you don't mind shambling through the city, pointlessly smashing everything in sight. Can't think of a good reason not to. This won't do us any good until we can control Max's arms. Sam, my biosensors are detecting a drop-off in transmotor electrical impulses to the lower quadrants. I'll skip it. Do you want to keep controlling Max or not? I'm enjoying the destruction. I'll stay here. Sam, you appear to be trying to run a program you downloaded off the internet. Did you mean to do that, or would you like to keep controlling Max? 
I'm done here. I want to go back. I raised this roach from a grub. Sam, Max is acting crazy again. Are you trying to control him? We're going in. Good work, Max. I've never liked this building. There's someone on the roof? This isn't much fun without being able to control Max's arms. Keep me updated, Sam. Are you going to keep controlling Max? I need some me time for a while. How dare you even suggest such a thing? He's my little angel! I love Sam Jr. like a daughter. Hey! But I'll admit he's an acquired taste. Corn dogs. Corn do Wait. Madre de Dios! La cucaracha! We must gather delicious cockroaches for the host! Uh, I don't know about this, Stinky. Feels like we got in way over our head. Don't tell me you're getting cold tarsal pads now, baby. Not when we're so close to having everything we ever wanted. Yeah, that's another thing. It was kind of exciting for the first couple of decades, but I don't think... What's that? It sounds like something's... coming. Yeah, so anyways, like I was saying... Queen, I've got you now. <laughs> now craving. How you doing, little guy? I actually like it better than the inside of your jacket. No offense. My doctor says I sweat a perfectly normal amount for a dog my size. Hiya, Sam. So this is what hell looks like. Well, kinda, now that you mention it. But we're not in hell. Really? Because I'd done some real bad things. I figured that monster had finally punched my ticket. No, we're just in Max's stomach. If you want to make up for all the bad things you've done, you can help us save the city. I'll do anything. Well... Almost anything. Maybe I'd better hear what it is first. Okay, use that video game machine up in the arm controls and read the commands off to Masur Paperweight. The brain's going to try to ventriloquize you to say the wrong thing, so... So I just say the complete opposite, right? Any dope could figure that out. Well, not any dope. I think you'd have to be pretty clever to figure that out. Brilliant, Sam! This roach is pure dynamite! He solved the manual override even faster than you did. Yeah, well, I did it first. There you go, Sam. I took care of those arms like you wanted. <coughs> I'll just get over to Battery Park and you can... Sam, are you okay, buddy? Looks like this is the end of my ride after all. Hey, Sam. But I thought roaches were immune to radiation. Nah, that's just a... <coughs> urban legend. 
But I figured that if a bunch of people need something, then that kind of weighs more than just one newly single deadbeat cockroach, you know? That's beautiful, Sal. I'll uh, edit it down a little before it goes into your biography. Now get over to that power plant and save the... Uh, 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 uh. Get over to that power plant and save the what, Sal? What? We need to know! Of all the roaches I've known, Sal was the second most human. I'll be sure to give him a proper and respectful flushing once this case is over. All right, team. We've only got a few hours left to save Max. Let's do this. We have the full control of the arms. Go! Then we're off to Battery Park. Activate feet and legs. Still active. Go! Activate hands and arms. Max Rescue Team, go! We've got Max under some semblance of control, but I'm never getting in that door until I can get to Battery Park and short out his brain. All right, team. We're going in. Strutting sequence engaged. Let's do this with some style, people. Beginning electrocution sequence. It's for your own good, not so little, buddy. <laughs> Did it work? Only one way to find out. That jolt should have been enough to short out Max's psychic powers. I'm going in. Uh-uh. Not so fast, my friends. Have you solved the mystery? I'll give you one more moment to check your work. Well, the clues to our villain's identity have been laid before you since the moment our story began. Have you figured it out yet? Is it Monsieur Paperweight and his hideous counterpart, Dr. Norrington, refugees from a dimension of pure evil? Or General Skunkarpe, driven mad by his insatiable lust for the toys of power? Civil pandemic with her. Do you mind? I'm trying to. Oh, now you've just ruined it. Oh, sorry. But what are you doing inside Max's brain? Inside Max's brain? <laughs> My dear Sam, I am Max's brain. Max's brain is a monochromatic fade British gentleman? Not the entire brain, perhaps. Just the part that matters. I believe that Freud called it the superego, but I'd hate to sound boastful. I didn't think Max had a superego. Yes, well, you're fat. It would seem that neither of us get the respect or attention we deserve. Well, you don't have to be a jerk about it. Forgive me, I'm lashing out. But you, of all people, should be able to understand my frustration after years of being partnered with a creature driven by pure id. I always tried to encourage his appreciation of the finer things. Literature, theater, beatboxing. I was always ignored. Are you the cause of Max's psychic powers? No. The gift was within Max from the beginning. A gift of incalculable power. It was just shape-shifting and some teleportation. Pretty common stuff, really. In all the universe, the only power beyond the mind's comprehension is the power of the mind. And how did Max use that power? To explore the mysteries of the infinite? No, to put the smack down on a host of petty criminals. Such a disappointment. A disappointment that will have to be corrected. So what's your plan, Brain? To take over the world? Because this world's not going down without a fight. Take over the world? Why would I want to do that? To prolong my suffering with an endless parade of armpit farts and locker room giggles? No, Sam. 
I want nothing more than to let it all end. And a psychic explosion that takes out most of the northeastern United States seems a particularly spectacular way to go. So you're going to destroy the city just because you're upset Max isn't more highbrow? Sam, Sam. They say that idle hands are the devil's playthings, but there is something far, far worse. An idle mind is the devil's playhouse. A stage for the most vapid, horrible, and destructive stories to be made real. Deep. And curiously insulting. Didn't think I'd be able to work the title in, did you? So you were the one using those psychic powers against me? An unavoidable, but entertaining necessity, I'm afraid. We couldn't have you wandering around Max's mind until the build-up of psychic energy had reached the tipping point, now could we? Um, maybe? It was a rhetorical question. You're lying! Oh, very well. I suppose you've forced me to come clean. Sam, I am actually an agent of a much higher power, appearing only to you and Max to guide you in times of crisis. I believe you mortals would refer to me as an angel. Wait. Really? Of course not. That would be stupid. I am the manifestation of the superego of a psychic rabbit detective mutated into a gigantic beast by a toy box filled with powerful toys from another dimension. Sometimes the simplest answer is the correct one. It sounds like you're just rationalizing away every evil decision you make just to convince yourself it's right. Uh, yeah, superego. That's pretty much what I do. Okay, here's how it's going to go down. I'm going to turn off the power, Sybil and Norrington are going to cut out that tumor, and then you're going to help us get Max back to normal. Sam, I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Max's power has reached critical levels, and it's only a matter of time until his brain catches fire and explodes, taking most of the eastern United States with it. Then we'll use his psychic powers. But how? The toys were all destroyed. All that is left is Max's memories of them. Most of which were destroyed by a sudden jolt of electricity. Oh dear, did you do that? How ironic. You said most of the powers were destroyed? Well, there's the astral projector for all the good that will do you. I'm not done with you yet. Don't go anywhere. I'll try not to let Max's mind wander. Good build. Imaginary mahogany. Super ego. Well, I don't like to brag, but I am pretty rad. It's that astral projection toy we found in our basement. No, please. You mustn't use Max's psychic powers. It will only speed up our destruction. Just try and stop me. Um, after you explain to me how it works. Max, in his current form, is a bit more simple than he used to be. The projector will only take slides now. Looks like a scrapbook. Precious memories. Aw, oh, that's awful cute. Giant Max is even more empty-headed than the regular version. Astral projection requires there to be a suitable host body on the other end. You can only project into a version of yourself. Like my great-grandfather? Exactly. Or one of the me clones. But all of the clones were quarantined to the reservations on Staten Island. Oh, there are still a few strays here and there. This must be that medulla oblongata everybody's been talking about. That ought to do it. Now Sybil and Norrington can get started on that brain surgery. That won't work. I raised the... Do you really want to be firing your weapon inside your partner's brain, Sam? Okay, seriously, Sam, cut it out.
Don't be a stranger. Great job, Sam. Just a few quick slices, and then we can get both of these mothers out of Max's brain. Wait! Now what's the problem? It appears that Max's tumor has become infected with dark matter. But you can make it better, right? Without Max, I'd be just another grim loner, skulking through the seedy armpits of the city, assaulting crooks and assorted crook-like punks in a humorless, over-narrated fashion. Sure, it'd probably sell like granny panties in a nunnery, but would I be happy? Not really. No earthly tools can remove dark matter. Believe me, I've tried. Hmm, destroy dark matter. I know, that toy robot I found. But I thought you guys said that all those psychic toys were destroyed. Destroyed? Nonsense. I can still sense the blasted thing. Somewhere in the city. Someone must have retrieved the toy from the Statue of Liberty and reassembled it. And I think I know exactly who. Our old favorite psychic toy collector, Harry Moleman. You mean General Skunkape, right? Oh yeah, Skunkape. He probably has the robot, doesn't he? I should go find him. Uh, to get the robot. Skunkape. Yeah. How are we going to remove that tumor, Dr. Norrington? That infernal robot, the Gathonic Destroyer. I can feel the warmth of his presence. Sybil's going to need that toy robot to get rid of Max's tumor. Are we ready to operate? Not until you can find something that can get rid of that dark matter that Dr. Norrington was talking about. Let's go out on the town and make some new memories for your short-term memory book, Max. <laughs> Remember that time we electrocuted you, Max? That was pretty spectacular. We can't needlessly electrocute Max. We get enough letters from animal rights groups as it is. Think, Max. Remember back when we were trapped on board Skunk Ape spaceship? Remember this block, Max? It's where we got our first citation for excessive property damage. You remember Mama Bosco's laugh, don't you, Max? Hey, that was uncalled for. Apologies, Sam. My tentacles slipped off the controls for a moment. Sam, my biosensors are detecting a drop-off in transmotor electrical impulses to the lower quadrant. I'll skip it. Do you want to keep controlling Max or not? I'm done here. I want to go back. That didn't work. There must not be any clones of me there. That didn't work. There must not be any clones of me there. There's no replacement Sam there to project into. Maybe some clone stragglers are still hanging around Mama Bosco's lab. What a stroke of luck. There is a clone hanging around the lab. And the poor guy's injured. This must be one of the clones Max was gnawing on last week. It's just as well, since there's not much for me to do around here anyway. 
I can't squeeze through there with this cone on, and there's no way to get it off. You'd think with this many screens, there'd be one that could tell me where that toy robot is. This destabilizer could be exactly what I need to get that toy robot, if not for one thing. It's not really that useful for anything. Mama Bosco, can you... Not now, clone. I'm busy here. Hey, President Superball. It's me, Sam. Oh, great. I'm so racked with guilt, but now I'm hearing things. You're not hearing things. I'm astrally projecting into a clone body after talking to Max's superego inside his brain. Keep it together, Superball. Sam will be able to save the day. He always does. I'd better not bother him. He's taking this whole having to blow up Max thing pretty hard. No sign of the toy robot on the crime alert. My clone ID tags. Useful, because I can't even tell us apart. This toothbrush is part of every clone starter kit, I'm guessing. No, if I lost these, they'd make me have to get my shots again. That seems a little more intimate than I'm comfortable with. Not much point in coming here in retrospect. Should I head back? Better hope a clone ended up on Skunk Ape's ship somehow. Here goes nothing. Wh where am I? Oh, I'm nuts. General Skunk Ape must have taken a few of the Doggle Gangers, I mean Samuel Acra, as souvenirs. No sign of anybody at the controls. He must be in the little space gorilla's room. Now's my chance. Looks like I'm gonna need the help of those not me's to get out of here. This tree is made of space fiberglass, but that didn't stop Harry Molman from gnawing on it, apparently. He's a fighter, that one. That's the rock Harry was lying on when he was trapped in here. It's all covered in mole sweat and too slippery to pick up. There's got to be some other way to move. Faded colors, fraying edges. I remember when quality meant something in a spaceship. What? Uh, it was like that when I got here, honest. Hmm, these wires are running from the other cages. I wonder what they do. nothing yet. My third eye is feeling a little itchy and watery. I wonder if I should switch to a different, fresher clone body. Hey, no fair. How come he gets the hamster wheel? These puzzles are making me thirsty. Well, that washed off the door to that fuse box, all right. Funny, I didn't notice this fuse box when Max and I were stuck in here before. The exposed, delicate electrical wiring of Skunk Ape spaceship. I'm not going to reach in with my hands. This may not be my real body, but getting electrocuted still hurts. Error, failure in stabilization controls. Clone HW021S, commence backup stabilization immediately. Uh-oh, sounds like that's my cue.
<laughs> Emergency stabilization in effect. Hope this is worth it. Ha ha! I've escaped your little jail skunk ape with nothing more than my wits and some gold lame shorts. Now just hand over that robot? Skunk ape? Where'd everybody go? There's no sign of Skunk Ape or Stinky either. Even in a clone body, I'm not gonna jump out of a flying spaceship. What are you doing here? The clones aren't allowed out of their cages. Mold processing room is locked tight. None may enter except at my whim! <laughs> he doesn't have teeth. Ooh, at least I hope he doesn't. How gross would that be? No, if I lost these, they'd make me have to get my shots again. You don't look like our pal, the alien. Wait a second. I recognize that brain. Clones aren't supposed to talk. Wait a second. I recognize that clone. You're Sam and Mark. You're Max. No, wait, Sam. Which one is the dog again? What is what's left of you doing here? If you must know, I'm controlling this ship with my mind until I can find a replacement body. And then I will once again rule the Earth. As is my divine right! So Skunk Ape hooked your brain into the controls of this ship, and then just left you here? I wasn't left here! General Skunk Ape turned command over to me to continue the assault on the giant Max creature. And to be frank, it is a role I relish, <laughs> considering my beef with him after his insolence. Now serving one beef frank on a roll with relish. Belay that order. It sounds like you're not quite in control of the spaceship yet, pal. I can control this vessel with just the smallest thought. Even while speaking to you, I am targeting your partner for a full assault with my... Uh, what's the word? Doors. Now cut that out! Keep up with the flying, Sam and Mac. I hate to think what would happen if this spaceship suddenly lost power. I'm not listening to you! So somebody found a use for your brain after all. Don't be jealous, dog. Someone will find a use for your brain someday. Burn! I wouldn't be so cocky. Don't you know what happens to the gifted brains that Skunk Ape uses to control his ship? You question the power of the great Samun Mac? I will bide my time with General Skunk Ape for as long as it serves my purposes. And when the time is right, I will strike like a cobra. Or at least the brain of a cobra. And how are you planning to take over exactly? You don't have any weapons. Weapons? The mighty Samun Mac has no need for weapons. So, did Skunk Ape leave a forwarding address or any contact information? Ha! Outwitted again, dog! Skunk Ape knew you'd be searching for him, and that's why he refused to tell me! Clever. All this time I thought you were just his brain slave, when you're practically his second in command. Of course! And to keep up the disguise, that's why he keeps refusing to clean out my tank! 
Just tell me where Skunk Ape is, and I promise I'll set you free to run around and play with other disembodied brains or something. Hmm. I suppose you will be needing a new psychic-powered partner, seeing as how your current one is about to be destroyed. That's it. I take it back. Tell me where Skunk Ape is, and I won't dropkick you into the Hudson. <laughs> Barbarians! All of you future creatures! I'll never tell! I'm looking for a toy robot. About yay big, goes by the name of Troy, gives its destruction to everyone. And why on earth should I help you? Because you're a brain in a jar and I know how to boil things? Very well. It's nowhere on this starship, I promise you. If the robot isn't on this spaceship, that means Skunk Ape took it with him. Oh, clever. No wonder you're a detective. I've got to find that toy. I've got to find that toy. Toy sensors activated. Stop that at once! I'm trying to concentrate. Toy sensors deactivated. Now, I've been meaning to ask you, what's your problem with the Mole Men anyway? Ugh, disgusting, pitiful creatures. All of them. They weren't so pitiful that they couldn't overthrow you twice. Nonsense. They caught me off guard is all. And I hadn't stretched first. And the Sun God Roll was in my eyes. So when you first found the Devil's Toy Box and became Pharaoh, the Mole Man overthrew you. That doesn't mean anything. And then when you got the ultimate power again to change reality itself, they managed to overthrow you again. Just you wait. Once I have taken my throne again, I will imprison all of those filthy Mole Men. And then wipe them out of existence. Now that I think about Mole Men, I know lots of Mole Men. There's Harry Mole Men, Shavuul, who was a Mole Man, his nephew Doug the Mole Man, Warren Burroughs, Prime Minister of the Mole People, Pat Oswalt. Stop that! Stop that immediately! Mole Man. Cut it out! Mole Man, Mole Man, Mole Man. For the last time, stop it! Rabbit season. I said stop! Wait. Weren't you supposed to say Mole Men? Damn it! General Skunkape, is it time? Why haven't you given up yet? Keep up the good work, Sam and Mac. I will cut off all life support and destroy you, dog! As soon as I figure out how. Grandpa Stinky! What? Oh yes, half dog. I am indeed the elderly stinky human. How did you get trapped in the mole processing room? Did Skunk Ape take you prisoner? Uh, no. Everything is fine. I thought this door led to the waste processing chamber. Did you notice if Skunk Ape was holding a toy robot that can destroy stuff from the dark dimension? I've got no idea what you're talking about. I've never even heard of the Catonic Destroyer. Uh, except that would be a good name for it. Probably. If it existed. Or if I knew what it was. What was the question again? This is important, Grandpa Stinky. Did Skunk Ape mention where he was going? Aye, but the General has guaranteed that you Earth creatures will never find him before the domination of... Uh, I mean, he did not. I am a cantankerous human. Pah. Are you all right, Grandpa Stinky? You seem different. I assure you, I am quite well. And I am in fact your associate. Grandpa Stinky. Well, okay then. Thank you for asking, though. You might as well admit it, you know. The freelance police are powerless to stop us anyway. Very well. Enough with the charade. I am actually the mighty Grey Pipe, mightiest of General Skunkape's warriors. You must have really made Skunk Ape angry for him to lock you in the mole room. Nonsense. <laughs> I am the linchpin in his plan for galactic domination. He secured me in the mole sweating room for the good of the Skunk Ape Empire. But speaking of sweat, you really should secure yourself in the showers for the good of everyone else. There was a mix-up with the heat controls. Fess up, pal. Where's that anti-dark matter toy robot hidden? Don't make me laugh, Earthling. 
After General Skunkapi so painstakingly reassembled the pieces of the Destroyer robot, he'd never be foolish enough to let it out of his sight. Why don't you reveal the entire plan to the enemy, Grapipe? Oh, right. Um, uh, uh, let's start over again. So, are you wearing a grandpa stinky suit or something? Ah, the true explanation of my current appearance is so mind-bogglingly horrifying, your mind would never be able to comprehend. You switch brains? Well, yes. And there's nothing you can do about it. Fair enough. All right, Mac. Where's Skunk Ape now? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you could possibly do to make me talk naked, Earth Dog. Well, I hate to have to do this, but it's for Max's sake. And I'm dressed for it anyway. Prepare yourself for my hypnotic dance of the third degree. All right, I'll talk. Just make it stop. He's at a warehouse in the southeast end of the featureless warehouse district. Hmm, I wonder if that has anything to do with Mama Bosco's cloning chamber. It's the Hotep Not Clone Related Industries building. 2348 Double Street at Gang Avenue. 212-555-2314. Okay, okay, I got it. Don't go anywhere. I may have more questions for you later. You'd better hurry. Your time's running out. <laughs> That seems a little more intimate than I'm comfortable with. Stop, Max. Concentrate, Max. Remember all the wacky hijinks we had in that cloning chamber. Sam, you appear to be trying to run a program you downloaded off the internet. Did you mean to do that, or would you like to keep controlling Max? I need some me time for a while. I think it's time Skunk Ape discussed this toy robot business, face to reasonable facsimile of my face. I'm so glad to see you're getting along with my unstoppable army of minions, Flint Paper. Play all you want. We'll make more. <laughs> Keep laughing, Simeon. Having a sunny personality will make the time go by faster in Sing Sang. <laughs> it what? It's a prison. Ah, no Earth prison can hold me. With my unstoppable army, my newly reformed queen at my side, and the power trapped in this ancient toy robot, our plan cannot fail. <laughs> you just forgot one thing, the self-destruct sequence. <laughs> this cloning chamber doesn't have a self-destruct sequence. Maybe not, but he does. Unstable antimatter device detected. Initiating containment protocols. Uh, you can override the bomb. Yes, my queen? I'm doing it, darling. I can't be wandering through mole tunnels now when there's so little time left to save Max. Yow! Now come on, who would put an invisible laser grid here? That stinky daemon or cockroach accomplice set that up to keep anybody from stumbling onto their magic show.
It's a big box, packed with evidence, no doubt. That's from all of Stinky and Sal's failed attempts to knock off Grandpa, before they hit on the magic recipe idea. The roach would dump the evidence off at the docks, then the mermaid would swim it down the Hudson Wait, wait, wait. Stinky's a mermaid? Seriously, Sam? Try to keep up. It's a big box, packed with evidence, no doubt. Looks like some kind of fog machine? Good eye, Sam. Near as I can make out, Sal turned that on to cover up Stinky's little disappearing act. Good thing I've been practicing my yoga during this whole crisis. It's a big hunk of rock. Left over from all the secret tunnels those lovebirds were having the mole people dig to pull off their scheme. She'd do anything to get rid of all that granite. I heard she was even selling it in sandwiches. If only I had more time, I could make it so these minions had cool handlebar mustaches and a natural talent with a sousaphone. I can't do anything with these. Stinky must have put the cloning controls on lockdown. Ah, uh, that was my fault, Sam. I was just trying to keep the clock from flashing 12, and the whole thing went haywire. I think this body might have needed a few more minutes in the clone tank. I'm still feeling a little doughy. Uh, hiya, Flint. Hey, Sam. Didn't recognize you without the suit. This is some crazy case, huh? Yeah, about this antimatter bomb. Oh, don't sweat it, pal. Once I finish off these hairy mugs, I'll round up those two saps and put a damper on that firecracker. Easy as portfolio diversification. So, Flint, about this bomb. Makes things interesting, huh? I told you getting to the bottom of this stinky business would be exciting. Yeah, but I was kind of hoping I wouldn't explode at the end of it. Ah, don't sweat it, Sam. I'll make quick work of those bums before the Big Bang. Any ideas about how I can get that robot from Skunk Ape? It's all yours once I'm done taking out these goons. Only 28,000 left to go. It's an old video projector. It was set up inside the diner, Sam. Turn it on at the right time. Cover it up with enough fog, and you can make it look like anything had just appeared out of thin air. Jinkies, it's a closed circuit TV camera hooked up to that projector. Right again, Sam. All she had to do was get Sal to hold up a photo at just the right time, and it was easy to make Grandpa Stinky think his magic spell had worked. Hey, I recognize that. That's the cake of the dam. The evil recipe that Grandpa Stinky magically turned into Girl Stinky. Or so that poor sap Grandpa Stinky was supposed to think. Hmm, I'll just call this Exhibit A. It's a photo of Grandpa Stinky's evil recipe that he allegedly used to create Girl Stinky. Looks like this clone had orders to pick up the Devil's Toy Box. Huh. Instant demonic spell. Pretty sneaky, Stinky. And since Grandpa Stinky thought he'd made her, he changed his will so that she'd get the diner if anything happened to him. Hey, Skunk Ape! Hand over that robot and nobody gets hurt! Hmm. That clone. It's almost as if he were sentient. Well, no matter. The last surviving artifact of Yog Sogoth in the entire universe, and it's mine! This will be essential to my plans. As soon as I find out what it does, and what the plan is exactly, I've been meaning to ask my queen. I'm busy here. So, about the toy robot I was asking for? All these years, I've been thinking too small. With this toy robot, I can not only conquer this universe, but entire dimensions. 
So I guess that means you won't let me borrow it for a few minutes? This plan of yours will never work, whatever it is. I land on a planet with a box full of the most inconceivably powerful objects in the universe, and I end up here with only one toy robot about to be blown up? Ah, uh, if only I hadn't disintegrated my life, Coach. Can't you see Stinky's just using you, like she did Sal? Is that clone trying to talk to you? Ignore it, my queen. I have to ask you a question about this plan of yours. Um, what is it again? Ugh, it's so simple. Grandpa Stinky. Nothing can kill him, right? We've tried everything. Okay, but... Flint paper can kill anything, but he'd never go after Grandpa willingly. Ah, uh, yes. Yes! I see. Except, no, not really. Stinky's playing you for a chomp, champ! So, the detective will be tricked into murdering the Elder Stinky? Because we put his brain into one of the Minions' bodies and then cloned millions of copies, so he'll never know which is which. Ah, it's genius in its simplicity. Sim, Sim, Salabim. What? The Devil's Toy Box? How can this be? The Devil's Toy Box? They said the Toy Box had been destroyed. Yeah, well, they say a lot of things. Talking clone? Oh, now I see. You have come to make things difficult for me again. Yes, Sam? You might as well give up, Skunk Ape. Once Stinky's done with you, you'll be tossed out like yesterday's bacon fat. Nonsense. She has been madly in love with me from the moment she saw me. Animal magnetism like this. You can't just turn it off, you know? How do you think I feel? Turn yourself in, Skunk Ape. Don't make things any harder on yourself. Since coming to this dreadful planet, I've been pulled through rock, shot at, imprisoned for decades, attacked by more men, pummeled by clones, and shot at by an overzealous pulp detective. How could things possibly get harder? Uh, you could do it without the hints turned on? Hand over that toy robot, and I'll think about turning the toy box over to you. <laughs> You're hardly in a position to make demands, Sam. Why should I turn over this toy, instead of simply taking what I want? Because I'll shoot you full of lead if you don't. <laughs> Sam, your earth bullets bounce off my hide like the gentle caress of a refreshing spring rain. But please, do your worst. Well, this is awkward. I seem to have left my gun in my other pants. Because that robot is the only thing that can save my not-so-little buddy. You Earthling's dependence on emotion will be your downfall. Well, that and my disintegrator beams. Because I'll give you all the money I have in freelance police petty cash. Such a pitiful amount would barely pay for one of my chest-waxing sessions. Because it's the right thing to do. Then I'll take my riches as ruler of the universe and donate them to cover my carbon offset. Because if you don't, I'll blow up the toy box once and for all. Yeah, you wouldn't dare. The explosion would destroy you along with half the city. I'd destroy half of any city to save my best pal. Besides, I'm using a loner body. You're serious? I'm just crazy enough to do it. No, here! Take the robot. Just keep that bomb away from the toy box. There! Antimatter bomb disabled. Containment protocols canceled. What is he doing? Now I better get this robot into Max's brain before Skunk Ape realizes he's been flamboozled. Is 
It's that toy robot that sends stuff back to the Dark Dimension. And it's the only way to save my formerly little buddy. I'm not giving this away to just anybody. Aha! Uh -huh. Instant demonic spell. Pretty sneaky, Stinky. And since Grandpa Stinky thought he'd made her, he changed his will so that she'd get the diner if anything happened to him. You got everything under control here, Flint? Ah, uh, this is as easy as picking lice from a hobo's. You hear that? Again with the hobo's. What's his problem? Don't kill that one, Flint. That's Grandpa Stinky. No problem, Sam. Sam to rescue team. Sam to rescue team. Robot acquired. Eat me. Over. Roger that. This is no time to go wandering around. Hey, I got that robot and... Uh, Skunk Ape must have put it back together himself. Watch that trigger. Once we blast away that dark matter, we should have enough time to remove the... Uh-oh. I think my water just broke. Pennies? Sam, we've got to get out of here. Now! But Max is... There is no way I'm having this baby inside a horrible monster! That horrible monster is my best friend, and we're running out of time to save him. What do we do? Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil. Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil! Save Sybil! My friends, the most wondrous thing has happened. It hasn't happened yet, and it's not going to unless we move. What? Oh yes, the baby. Whatever. No, my friends, the wondrous thing is that Max has actually committed a selfless act. Ah, uh, who's this guy? He's the personification of Max's superego. Ah, makes sense. That means he's more than just pure id. He's capable of self-sacrifice. I've made a terrible mistake. Max is worth saving after all. Told you so. Go. Save Sybil. I will stay here and remove this wretched tumor. But how do we get out of here in time? Huh? No doubt there's something in here you've overlooked. Sybil's going to need that toy robot to get rid of Max's tumor. Are you sure you're qualified to remove Max's tumor? Sam, I narrated the entire series of brain surgery for brain deficiency on VHS. Of course I know what I'm doing. Can you really perform brain surgery on yourself? Not with you standing here interrupting me. Go, hurry! Oh, uh, uh, breathe, breathe, Sybil. Do you need any water? Or hot towels? Or a complimentary mint? I need for you to get me out of this monster! So what's the quickest way out of a 20-story tall lagomorph? Save Sybil! Looks comfortable. Any ideas how we can get out of here? None that aren't unspeakably unsanitary, I'm afraid. Why does Max have tear ducts? I can't remember the last time I saw him cry. Well, except when he was trying to lull his prey into a false sense of security. 
It won't do any good unless Max is crying, though. This tear duct should be big enough to fit all of us. Even Sybil. Man, I cannot get over how huge she is. It won't do any good unless Max is crying, though. Chinuchluck wiped the last remaining ichor and blubber from his carving knife, then sat down on the one patch of ice not covered by walrus intestines. Why so sad? asked Paco, his faithful deer tick companion. It was a clean kill. I know, sobbed Chinuchluck, but there was no one here to see it. This tear duct should be big enough to fit all of us, even Sybil. Man, I cannot get over how huge she is. All right, everybody, let's load up and make a quick getaway. Good luck, Max's superego. We're all counting on you. Don't worry, Sam. I'll have Max back to his normal, impetuous, wonderful self in five minutes. Just go and hurry. Sam, you have to get out now. The main trons will impact in four minutes. <laughs> uh, why aren't we moving? Wait a second. This isn't the tear duct. <laughs> well, that was thoroughly unpleasant. Gazootheit! Let's get you to the hospital, Mrs. Pandemic Lincoln. Ugh, oh, that's Lincoln Pandemic? Could you keep it down? Our head is killing us! Quick, Giant Max, get out of there! The last Mametron is headed your way! Saved the city. But where did he go? I almost had everything, and then you had to start slobbering over a stupid piece of rock. For the last time, my queen, I will get you a diner on the next world we conquer. Just get me far away from... Didn't I tell you to get rid of that cell phone already? Who could possibly be calling me? Max? Realign the mitochondrial plasmoid transference secret. Oh, who am I trying to kid? I'm making all this up as I go along. Anyway, I've adjusted the cloning tank, so we should be able to bring Max back as good as new. Great, Dr. Mama Bosco. Let's do it. I'll just need a sample of his DNA, one that's less than one week old. Max is always climbing on top of me and beating me up. I've got to be crawling with this DNA, right, Mama Bosco? I don't doubt it, Sam, but it's got to be fresh to work with my machines. Didn't you pick up anything that whole time you were inside his body? Do you have any of Max's DNA, Flint? 
Sorry, Sam. You know I go to the spa and get a good exfoliating scrub and full delousing whenever I hang out with you guys. I'm gonna miss the little guy. He was a real borderline psychotic hero. Don't worry, Grandpa Stinky. I'm sure Mama Bosco will find some way to get you back into your real body. Ah, uh, no rush. I could get used to this one. I just wish I hadn't left my keys in the other body's pants. Senseless vandalism has its place, but this isn't it. Oh, Max's snot got all over my inventory. And lots of other unmentionable personal areas. No, this gob of snot is all I have left to remember Max. No, this gob... Try this, Mama Bosco. It should be crawling with Max DNA. God knows what else. Perfect. This should only take a few minutes. That should do it. Welcome back, little... buddy. What happened? It looks like Max's DNA is just too weird for my machines to be able to reproduce. There's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Sam. Ah, tough break, Samo. At least he went out saving the universe. As president, I'd just like to offer my... I can't do this now. I just can't. <laughs> Superball, come back!
Oh, hi, Sam. Holy beer-battered princes of Maine and kings of New England in a glass-bottom boat with a trip-hop DJ and the second runner-up in the Miss Teen Oklahoma pageant. It's past Max in a time-traveling elevator. What's shaking? Max, I thought you were... Wait a second, where's the past me? Oh, yeah, about that. We were on a case and you got turned into a giant monster with electromagnetic powers, so I kind of had to blow you up. It was horrible! So, wanna stop some crimes? Let's. Where do we start, pal? I heard there's a new supervillain in town called The Banker. He's created a board game that kills. And there's rumblings that the horrible Rat Queen has been summoning all her minions to her secret nest beneath the city, subsuming them into her blood-caked fur to form the unstoppable Uber Rat, Empress of Slaughter. Oh boy, I can subdue her with my acid slick whip-like tongue. You don't have an acid slick with like tongue. Oh, well, I can still drool on her till she begs me to stop. You crack me up, little buddy.